In this video, we're gonna go over the most profitable mushroom strains that I use for my business, and I'm gonna offer some advice and tips for beginners, that's coming up. Hey guys, Brian here from What the Fungus. If it's your first time visiting my channel, we're a seasonal mushroom farm here in British Columbia. I'm always taking you through my business every year as we work on new innovations and develop the business here in British Columbia. So if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing. Are you just starting a mushroom business and you're looking at getting cultures and trying to figure out what to grow in your space? That's what this video is all about today. Before we get too deep into this video, I wanted to let you guys know that I've been collecting strains for about, I guess it's about five years now, and we have 71 different varieties. And I keep everything on these pages here. We go over, you know, what the strain is, notes, uh, when when I got the strain, and, uh, and then as, as I get uh, fruiting, fruiting production data, all that gets updated, and eventually I start kind of picking stuff that really works for my business. I, I, haven't, I haven't grown everything here, but, but I have collected. So when I, when I first started out, I, uh, I was kind of of the opinion that you had to buy really expensive strains to get good commercial production. And I, uh, I actually called uh, Fungi Perfecti uh, because uh, Paul Stamets uh, was the guy when I started to get mushroom strains. So I, 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 gathered, I gathered some of the best strains from him and uh, I kind of just went from there. And then eventually I started connecting with people on Facebook and, and other mushroom growers and I started doing mushroom trades. And now we've collected such a detailed list that uh, I actually offer these for sale. So if anyone's interested in some mushroom cultures, I'll leave a link below for my email. I'll send you that list. And uh, you know, it's really, really cheap actually. I just sell uh, a plate for, for $25. And we'll give you one of these. It'll have the date and the generation. And uh, we grow everything fresh in the lab right here. And uh, I happen to actually be working on an order right now. This is for my buddy Alex. He's, uh, he's getting five, five strains from me. He's getting our tree oyster, our elm oyster, our local pearl oyster. Uh, we have a really nice king oyster strain that's from Germany and chestnut mushroom. So if you guys are interested in connecting with me and getting some nice cultures, well, it's only $25 a plate uh, plus shipping and uh, it's really fair. And I've collected some really awesome stuff. So I'm happy to get that out to you guys. Uh, so the, for the point of today's video, I wanna talk about the most profitable strains that we grow. Now our farm's a little bit different than most mushroom farms. We grow seasonally outdoors in greenhouses. So strain selection becomes really important for us. A lot of the big mushroom growers, they'll focus on two or three varieties and everyone kind of grows the same mushroom. They're focused on mass production and selling wholesale. And the, the, the market is, is that they don't need to, they don't need to grow a variety of mushrooms. They just need to grow a lot of volume of, of one or two different types so that everyone that's buying off of them know knows what they're getting. So my business, we actually do all of the marketing, all of the sales to restaurants so I can grow whatever I want. And then if there's a variety that maybe doesn't yield as much, then the price goes up. And then if it yields a lot, then the price goes down. And then based on commonality, uniqueness in our market, the place the, the price will fluctuate as well. So that, that's kind of how we do it. Um, but ultimately we're looking for high yielding strains with uh, as little nutrition uh, input that we need to put into the blocks. So that would be bran or soy hulls. And we're just really looking to get the most money out of, uh, out of a block and a block is either hardwood sawdust or wood chips with nutrition. So for, for my business, uh, I'm going to be starting off my year in about three weeks. I'm going to be getting some Petri dishes going. And we always start with our tree oyster. So that's 005 on my strain list here. You guys can see that. So I start with tree oyster. This, uh, this strain I've had actually right from the beginning. And... 
it's uh, something that, that I've actually just recently discovered. It does really well in the cold. And the colder uh, we grow this strain in, it actually gets this really nice uh, striping on the cap. And it's absolutely beautiful, almost like a purpley brown oyster variety. So this, this, this mushroom, I like to start the season off or end the season because it can handle freezing, it can bounce back, and the cold doesn't really seem to affect the mushroom in any way. And it still, it still grows really fast in the cold, which is really important. So as, as we get uh, warmer, mushroom species will speed up in their growth to a point where they might get too stressed and they're going to start performing characteristics that we're not looking for. So then we transition into warmer varieties and we'll get into that as well. So the, the cold weather species I start with is tree oyster and our blue oyster variety which uh, is 008 and again I'll leave my email, email in the show notes below and I can give you this list but I'm going to reference all of the strains by code and the codes are just codes that I've I've put with each mushroom strain as it comes into possession for us. So uh, 008 is a blue oyster variety that we grow. It uh, doesn't do well when it's too cold but it's still a strain that I like to kind of do early spring into uh, Almost almost late late spring, but not quite summer. So uh, 008, our blue oyster strain, likes a temperature range between 10 and I want to say 28 Celsius. And I apologize, I'm in Canada. I do try to reference Fahrenheit a lot, but I don't have everything in my head right now for that. So for this video, everything is going to be in Celsius. You're just going to have to look up and figure out what those requirements are for you. Uh, so tree oyster, blue oyster, and uh, our king oyster strain, I, I like to start off with as well. And the cold just slows it down, so I don't really see uh, any kind of negative in starting the king oyster other than it's just going to start off slow. So my season will, will usually be the, the king and the tree oyster, and then usually a month later I get into the blue oyster. And, and then somewhere in the middle there, we do our pearl oyster, which is uh, 050. This strain can handle the cold, it does slow down, but it also can handle the heat. So I like to grow our pearl oyster strain between, I want to say, first week of May to maybe the first week of August. And then I might take maybe four or five weeks off from that strain when it's at that peak summer temperature because uh, I have other strains that are going to perform better. 050, our pearl oyster strain, is a local indigenous strain to Oliver. And it's by far one of the best oyster mushroom varieties that I grow. And the reason for that is it doesn't really get stressed uh, as it gets hotter. And it doesn't really slow down too much as it gets colder. If anything, the, the colder environment that this strain grows in, the, the mushroom actually looks and tastes a lot better. They're, they're really beautiful fruit bodies. So there's really something said to having your mushrooms grow slower than faster. I, I think it produces a better better fruit body ultimately and that's really what you're looking for is to have really good quality if you're if you're selling to restaurants and charging a premium like we are. So again guys, uh, 005, 008, uh, 050 and our king oyster from Germany is 054. Those are the four varieties that we start off the season with in the spring and ultimately that's the four varieties that I finish off the season with uh, coming into September, October, November. Um, but more heavily, I like to focus on, uh, to finish off the season, I would say the tree and the pearl because the king oyster, as, as, as we're warming from spring to summer, the king oyster just takes off and does really well to about 30 Celsius, which is awesome. But as, as we're getting, uh, from warmer to colder, the king oyster pretty much stops growing. So it's not really a good strain to finish off the season with, but I can definitely do a little bit of production and, and get some of the, uh, the king oyster to produce, usually in the, about September, early October. But really I'm counting on 005050 to end the season because as it gets colder, it doesn't really affect the production. So that, that's really important and it can handle freezing. And we're just starting to get into overwintering and letting these blocks freeze with 050 and 005 and all that data is still coming in. But it's really 
looking promising that these strains are going to be able to freeze and then bounce back and get a crop in early spring as well. So that's always ongoing research with, with different strains. And the only thing I would note is that we are really enjoying working with local indigenous strains. So instead of us focusing on high producing commercial strains, I really do like uh, getting local indigenous strains to our area, playing around with those and kind of seeing how they perform. We live in a really dry desert climate and uh, mushrooms are, are usually hard to find here in the wild. So when, when the conditions are right, they have to really kind of uh, maximize their output and I feel like these local indigenous strains uh, are not as picky on temperature because they're really looking to spread their spores and mature when the conditions are right then that being uh, humidity and moisture so uh, with our with our local pearl oyster strain uh, I've been really impressed and that research is still ongoing but it's uh, it's definitely been a winner for us so just, just something to note guys, uh, looking for strains in your area is, is really interesting, but from a market standpoint in selling to restaurants, if you control the, the selling of your product, um, and, and obviously you're, you're, you're comfortable in, de in identifying your mushroom strains, which is really important. And oyster, oyster mushroom strains are pretty easy to identify. Usually the, you're going to find the gills running down the stem. It's going to be growing on a decaying hardwood species in most cases. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you can, you can get an identification book and kind of go over all, all the, uh, the nuances of mushroom identification. And obviously I'm not encouraging anyone to do this if you don't have the expertise, but oyster mushrooms, once you get down to it, they're pretty easy to identify. What's most important is usually a white spore print. So, Moving on to uh, the summer, we're going to be transitioning with 050 and kind of growing that still kind of into summer. But then we're going to be moving into our L Moisture strain. This is uh, 006 on our list, and this is Hypsigus almerius, although it's been misidentified. And this has uh, been a long journey of mine trying to figure out the true name for this mushroom. But as of right now, it's, uh, it's really an unknown but it's a delicious edible oyster mushroom that is assumed to be assumed to be Pleurotus species, but as, as of right now, it's been identified as Hypsigus almerius. And really the, the, uh, the difference there is Hypsigus almerius, the gills are current gills, so they're tucked up, whereas decurrent gills, like a typical oyster mushroom, run down the stem. In this case, the Hypsigus almerius culture, the gills run down the stem, so it is assumed that it's a Pleurotus species, but again, it's been misidentified. So for our for our uh, uh, identification purposes, we still call this Hypsigus almerius, and uh, this is probably one of my favorite strains, 006. This is otherwise known as Elm Z, and I got this from Jay Schindler out of Fungi uh, Fungi for the People, and this is actually a uh, a mushroom variety that he developed through spores and he did multiple trials and he was I believe he was uh, initially planning to use this mushroom for uh, cleaning up oil spills and kind of uh, using it for micro remediation purposes but the, the fruit bodies are exceptionally large and it's a really tasty mushroom and it does so well in the heat here. This mushroom I love to grow between 22 and 36, 37 Celsius. It's definitely my go-to mushroom for all of summer and it outputs a lot and it's an extremely unique variety that most uh, wholesale mushroom growers or uh, brokers don't provide to restaurants or the, or, or the local public. So this is a variety that I can specialize in, charge a premium for and uh, get a really good yield in production because it's a really awesome producing strain, but only in warmer temperatures. So I have to make sure that I'm matching this strain with the right weather. Another note uh, with Elm Oyster is uh, really unique. Uh, it actually can get a mutation if it's uh, too wet. So if your grow room is, is misting a lot and you're getting water droplets everywhere, one that can grow bacteria, so you want to kind of limit that. But with L moisture specifically, if the mushroom's too wet, and then let's say for my business I'm outside, it gets cold, and that water sits on the mushroom longer than normal, and uh, the water's not evaporating because it's humid and cold outside, um, we'll get these little 
mutations on the mushrooms and in most cases gills are growing kind of on the cap and and it kind of gets all like little twisted and almost like wart like and that took me a long time to realize that but uh, this year I pretty much didn't see that at all and it was because our grow room design was allowing excess moisture to drop in the mushrooms so something to note guys uh, conditions can affect mushrooms as well and uh, you can see this with king oyster as well, although it's not as common compared to uh, our warm weather elm oyster strain. So our, our, our peak, peak summer is our warm weather elm oyster 006. And then I like to dabble with pink and yellow oyster a bit. And, and uh, those strains that I grow, I have a commercial yellow oyster variety that's out of Vancouver. We call that 024. Now this strain is still a low yielding strain and a lot of more research is needed uh, to, to really produce the money I'm looking to make with this variety. But uh, I've recently discovered that the Masters Mix, Andrew Reed of Mossy Creek Mushrooms was mentioning that the Masters Mix, which is 50% soy hull, 50% hardwood fuel pellets, was producing some really impressive yellow oyster fruit bodies with his strain so I'll be continuing on that research with my variety. Um, what I do like about my yellow oyster variety is that the fruit bodies are stunning, they're large and when the conditions are right it's just a really beautiful mushroom. The negative part about growing yellow oysters uh, I would say is the shelf life. You have about probably about three days in the chef's kitchen to use these. They, uh, they're very brittle, they break apart, so you gotta be really careful. And from my experience, this is a mushroom that some chefs like, some chefs don't. But that being said, if you cook it right, you cook it crispy, it really takes on a really nutty cashew flavor. Um, I really enjoy yellow oysters, and uh, I do like growing them, but I, for my business, I'm gonna need to increase the yield and then only grow them for select chefs that will enjoy them. So it's not a variety that I'm gonna focus my main production on. Uh, pink oysters is kind of like that too, but overall chefs love pink, pink oysters. Uh, some people don't like the smell of pink oysters. They, they can kind of have like an ocean smell, almost like a shellfish smell to them. But they cook up really nice and, and they're delicious. They're not the bacon mushroom that some people talk about. I don't know why that's been marketed as the bacon mushroom. But that's another subject I'm not going to get into. But pink oysters are a really beautiful variety. And for the most part, they like the heat. And they can, they can handle a little bit of transition into the cold as we move into the fall. Or, or from uh, spring into the fall. So it's a mushroom that has a little bit wider range compared to yellow oysters. If it gets too cold with the yellow oysters, um, they'll just die. And they'll start fruiting and then eventually they'll turn brown and die. So they really need those perfect conditions and they can't handle cold fluctuations. So for my business outside, being a seasonal business... Um, yellow oyster I have a smaller window where I should be growing it. For our pink oyster variety uh, I, ha I actually developed this from spores and uh, I got some spores and I grew I think about five different uh, strains that I had isolated from spores. I'll do a video on here eventually how to do that but basically uh, we're doing a spore print on some tin foil with the mushroom and then I'm going to swab the spores and put those on agar. And I'm sterilizing uh, distilled water in a shot glass. I have an uh, inoculation loop that I'm gonna use my electric sterilizer with. I'm gonna heat that. And basically I'm going to scrape, put in some clean distilled water, and then with my syringe that I've, I've sterilized, as, sterilized as well, um, I'm just gonna take a little bit of that up and just drop one drop of the spore distilled water solution right on some agar and then you'll see in about a week you'll get all these little colonies growing they don't connect because they're different genetics and then you can start sectoring those off and growing different isolates of of your strain and and then start growing them out and comparing uh, production in, in your grow rooms and see what strains you like so that, that's kind of how those genetics work um, it's uh, it's really a lot of fun to do. Uh, I've, I haven't uh, needed to do it in a while, but it's uh, definitely something that I'm going to do on this channel. I'll do a video on how to do spore isolates eventually. Um, so that, that strain that uh, we ended up uh, picking for Pink Oyster is 042A. And the other strains were not as impressive, so I just labeled like A to E, and then I ended up picking A. And we grow that Pink Oyster variety. 
And I've compared that with some commercial varieties. There's uh, the Salmonellus or something from Aloha. Um, I had one from Fungi Perfecti. And I compared my strains as well. And actually, my spore isolate strain has been the absolute winner. So in that case, it, it outbeat the competition, but but it also it works in my environment. So like, because, you know, an indoor setup that's more stabilized and more consistent, you might prefer other varieties. So it's hard to say uh, what strains are going to work well for everyone. And really, it's all about just kind of experimenting and kind of seeing what works in your setup. So hope you guys found this helpful. Again, uh, I do offer all of our strains uh, for sale. I just don't market it. So if you guys are interested in picking up some cultures from me, I got lots of time this winter. It's $25 a plate plus shipping. You know, shoot me an email, check out the show notes below. Um, we're starting to sell out really quick for my mentorship course, uh, we're all we're all booked between March, April, May. I think I have one week in June left. And now we're booking into July and August. And I'm already starting to fill those. I even have a booking in September already. So mentorship course has been really successful. We did an early bird discount to kind of get this going this year. Um, that ends uh, January 31st. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. Again, the link is going to be in the show notes below to my webpage. It goes over the course details. Um, I'm gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be offering some other stuff on this channel. I'm gonna be promoting some other stuff coming up, um, but I'm gonna leave that, leave that for another video. We're always gonna be showing you guys lots of different stuff, and uh, 2018 is uh, gonna be pretty exciting for us. So stay tuned, guys. More videos coming out. Again, thanks for watching, and we will talk to you soon.